Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, if you're on the uh, on the East Coast, and good morning if you're on the West Coast. Uh, my name is Jonathan Taylor. I'm the Technical and Marketing Manager for Civil Survey Solutions. And today it's my pleasure to introduce you to the Point Clouds and Services Technical Webcast. We'll be having a couple of presenters today. We've got uh, Terry Selton. He's our application engineer and our Civil 3D guru based in our Perth office. Um, Terry, if you're there, you can say hi. Maybe some technical difficulties with Terry there. But Jack, we've got you on the um, Melbourne line. Um, Jack is our application engineer and survey guru. Yeah, I'm here. I'll say hello. Fantastic. <laughs> I don't think it's stage right from Terry. I think it's just a case of we've possibly got a technical, uh, technical issue there where we can't hear him. So um, again, thanks for attending. Uh, today is all about point clouds and surfaces. I'm just going to do a very quick um, sum up of today's agenda. Uh, the webcast agenda is this. We're going to be looking at using something called Recap. Um, for those of you that aren't even aware of what Recap is, it's an Autodesk product, which um, you can actually purchase as a standalone product, or it's actually part of the AEC collection. Um, we are going to be using that. Um, in the first instance, Jack is going to be showing us how to import and manage a point cloud file, um, which will be coming from potentially a third party, a surveyor, something along those lines. Then we'll be looking at using Recap to export the data into a form which um, can be used for the purposes of creating a surface. And this is where Terry's really going to be taking over, looking at importing the cloud data into Civil 3D. The last part, and really the most major part or fundamental part of this whole session, is going to be the inclusion of three methods to generate a surface. Um, this isn't intended to be a necessary a real deep dive into where point clouds originate from, their history, etc. This is really just to get you up to speed with using a point cloud, creating a surface, and getting you on your way with designing. Just before we start, we've got just a few polls just to engage um, all of you. Just if you get a second, just to respond to some of these questions, just to get a sense of who's in the audience today. So um, we're just going to pop up three questions. And the first one is as follows. So hopefully you're seeing that. Have you used Auto Re or or Autodesk Recap? Um, and uh, obviously we're collecting those responses. Now, this is a live poll. So um, should be able to get some responses. So at the moment, we've got a 60-40 split. So 60% of you haven't. I'm just going to close that poll. Thanks ever so much for responding. It's going to share that with you now. And a couple of other questions as well. Um, the next one is, well, look, um, if we just hide that, uh, we'll go in and say, have you created a surface generated from a point cloud before? We're just going to launch that one now. So again, if you can just answer as honestly as you can. It's yes or no. So uh, um, pretty simple stuff. Interesting, nearly 50-50 split. So half of you have actually created a surface from a point cloud uh, file and 50 of you haven't. Very, very interesting split there. Last question is if you said yes, you're part of that group that just said yes. But let's just share the results there just so you can see. The last question is if you have, just going to hide that, have created a surface, what tools have you used to create it? So you can just go ahead and if you clicked on yes, so far, interesting split, 80% civil 3D, 15% civil side design. Nobody's used map, which I, to be honest with you is fairly understandable because that's not something I've, I'd ever considered using. Thanks for your responses on that. I'm just going to click on close. It's good that 50% of you, 50 of you responded because that equates to question two. <laughs> So let's just very quickly share those results and you can see there, yeah, that most of um, those of you that have created surfaces have used Civil 3D. So look, this is, um, as I said, it's intended to show you a really good workflow process to start with a point cloud file and end up with a surface at the end of it and look at how you can manage those. And it's going to be split in two. So we'll have Jack presenting the first portion on recap, which invariably will be quite short, then followed by um, Terry, and he'll be delving deep into the Civil 3D side of things. So let's just hide the poll. There is a Q&A panel on the right hand side or in the little ribbon that you'll have on your screen. We will look to answer as many questions as we can at the end of the webcast. Um, otherwise, we'll interrupt the flow. We might lose uh, might lose some time as well. We're not necessarily going to be able to answer all questions. There is a survey at the end, um, which you will be able to add any sort of deep technical questions you can add in and we can answer those outside of the webcast. 
There will be a recording as well, so pay attention for the end and you'll see that there is a, a link to our YouTube channel where eventually the recording will be found. On that very brief introduction, um, it's now a pleasure to introduce Jack Horton, um, who's now going to begin the process of talking you through um, using Recap. So I'm now going to make Jack the presenter. You're all good. You can see my screen. Yeah, fantastic. Great stuff. Sweet. So thanks, JT. Uh, as said, my name's Jack Horton. I'm the Survey Applications Manager here at CSS, and I'll just be telling you quickly about point clouds and then we'll get into the recap side of things. So point clouds are dense collections of point data collected through a scanner, generally attached to either a drone or done on the ground. Um, we can use these po this point cloud data to try and help with the design process. It gives us a, a real world context for a lot of what we're viewing. So instead of you getting a plan with a bunch of data points that are if you didn't go out there, you might not know what you're looking at. It allows you to have real world context because you've got that RGB telling, showing you what exactly you're looking at along with certain other things. So this is the workflow that we're going to be going through for recap. So we'll be combining the last files that I've got and producing an RCP file. We will then edit this as needed within recap before finally exporting this file so that an engineer can use it. So it's a very basic workflow. I won't be going too in-depth in it today, but it'll give you a good standing point to go on forward. So opening up Recap, this is the screen we are met with. For today, we're going to go up to New Project and just start from scratch. So we've got a few methods of import here. I'm going to be importing a point cloud. However, you are also able to import information from a mobile device or get your information from a series of photos. For today, I'm just going to be messing with the point cloud though. So I'll just click on that and we're able to create our new project. So I'm just going to call this webinar project and we're able to save it as needed. So I'm just going to save mine into webinar data set. This is a file I created beforehand. Why has that not worked? Yeah, there it goes. And I'll just hit proceed. And now we're able to bring in our files. We can either browse for them using this one here, select a complete file to bring in, or we can drag and drop. So I've got this data set here that we have procured from a, an actual surveyor. They have gone out and picked this information up and they have allowed us to use their data. So as you can see, it's quite easy. You just drag and drop. You're brought into the scan settings. This is where you can set your clipping and all that because I'm just doing a basic thing. This isn't as important. You can just go straight to import. Now we're indexing them. This is where if you have multiple uh, BLAST files, it starts to stitch them together using common points. So due to the fact I've only got one, it goes through this process very quickly. I can hit index and then I can launch the project. So now we've brought this into recap. All of our point data is in here. As you can see, I'm able to maneuver around this fairly easily. I can rotate or orbit using the right mouse button and I can pan using the middle mouse button. You can scroll in to get a zoomed in and as you can see, the closer you get, the harder it is to visualize anything. Now for a surveyor, let's say you've gone out in the field, you've picked all this up, but the area we're wanting is only this bit here where I'm tracking my mouse at the moment and we're finishing at this fence line. So we don't want anything across the road over here or on the other side of this fence line. We want to delete these points so that we've got as small a file as possible to send off to our client or the engineer who's trying to work with this. So this is quite simple. We just hold down the left click, select the area you don't want 
it'll highlight and then you just hit delete. This will remove all these points from the drawing so they won't show up when you export or anything. If you want to just make the drawing easier for you to view, we use the clip. So if I use clip here, clip inside, all those points are gone. However, if I tried to export, they would still be in the export file. If I want to undo this, I hit unclip all, and that all comes back. So I'll just delete these now. That's now been removed from the drawing. I'll get rid of this section. So none of that will be going through, would go through to Jonathan in the future. So now we get to export. You go up to the home section and we go to this icon here. This is the export button. Selecting this, you'll be asked where you want to export to. You just save it here. And we get a choice of what we want to export as. RCP and RCS are both Autodesk file types. So they will be supported by most different Autodesk programs, Civil 3D is included. Points and E57 are both external ones. Points is mainly used for um, Cyclone, I believe, Leica based, the Leica based program, or E57 is a universal type one. So we'll just save this here as an RCP file. And it asks, do we want to unify our scans? This means that if you've brought in multiple point cloud data, it's come through as separate points or separate point clouds. This brings all of it together, so we've only got the one. So I'll unify this project scan, and you'll see that it's exporting everything. It's going very fast because I've only got the one point cloud, and it's already done. So if I go back to my folder here, you'll see it's been exported. It's smaller than the original point cloud data by a whole bunch. And yeah, that's the how you would export data from Recap. I would then hand this off to the designer, someone like Jonathan, who would then go and do what he needs to do with it. And with that, I will hand off to him. Thanks very much, Jack. Yeah, so guys, hopefully you've seen that. It's actually a quite straightforward process. Um, there's, there's really not much to setting this up in the first instance. At this point, we're sort of assuming that the um, the process now gets handed to the designer, which in this case will be Terry. Um, so Terry, um, I presume the audio is hopefully now working, um, as I'm just trying to unmute you. Um, are you there, Terry? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Great stuff. You didn't get a chance to say hello earlier, and I was going to crack a joke about the fact you're wearing ski gear and you're in WA, um, but uh, I couldn't because you weren't there to, um, to obviously uh, have any kind of rebuttal. Anyway, Terry, I'm now going to make uh, you the uh, presenter. So um, as part of this process, um, Terry's now going to be showing his screen, uh, and we're going to be going forth from there. Perfect, great. Okay, so um, well, just uh, in rebuttal to the ski slopes, that was uh, the beautiful New Zealand. So uh, any chance you get, get over there and, and go skiing. It's beautiful over there. Okay, so um, as Jack pointed out, uh, the uh, surveyor would have uh, picked up the point cloud and provided that data uh, in the uh, recap format, the RCP format. Um, you can see here uh, what we're going to do is uh, use the point cloud, which uh, they're an efficient method of, um, of collecting bulk site data. Um, the trade-off with that is that they're relatively uh, inaccurate compared to regular survey methods. Uh, the file sizes are also typically um, quite massive, um, and so that, that can be quite a challenge. And throughout this exercise, you're going to see um, some of the trade-offs with file size versus uh, detail. Uh, and you can use um, a variety of tools to create a surface from your point cloud. So we're going to be showing uh, Civil 3D uh, map tools within Civil 3D and Civil Survey Solutions Model Viewer as a solution to getting a surface. Um, before we kick off with the Civil 3D, what we would do, or what I would recommend you do, is consider setting up your drawing to uh, manage the file size to make it manageable, um, avoid crashing, uh, all of those sort of issues uh, which typically um, users might experience. Um, there's a few different options. Um, I'm going to be setting up a few for this uh, project just so you can see what's required. 
workflow that we'll be following. Um, we've received our uh, raw uh, data, or Jack's already run through the process of uh, processing the raw data, the LAS file, into a, um, an RCP file, a recap file. Uh, we'll be taking that into Civil 3D, um, preparing our drawing so that it can handle the file size and then creating a surface using the Civil 3D. Um, we'll also be uh, using the uh, map tools, creating a DEM file and creating a uh, grid surface entity um, and then creating a surface via the TIFF import. And then uh, we'll also be uh, re-importing the raw data using Civil Site Design through the model viewer and then um, setting up our settings, uh, cropping it again if required, and then we can uh, output a surface um, using these settings here. All of these settings, I've documented uh, the settings uh, for users if they're interested um, in the settings that we use for this demo. And they're all, this uh, spreadsheet is also available in the handout, which will be a link uh, in your go-to um, setup. Okay, so to kick off, this is uh, Veridale. Uh, this data set was um, provided by uh, Greg, who uh, is one of the users of Civil Site Design. Um, so he was uh, generous enough to provide this for us. Uh, all I've done with this aerial photo is um, gotten that from Google Earth and just brought that in and aligned it, used the align command. Uh, and as uh, new users might not be aware, uh, aerial photos come in and like any XREF, they're stored here in the XREF list. Uh, so you'll see as I bring the, uh, objects in, any object in SIL 3D uh, will be documented uh, usually in the tool space. Um, SIL 3D users will be very familiar with the tool space uh, and this uh, XREF tab as well. Okay, so the first step is we'll come in and go to the insert tab and click on the attach point cloud button brings up the interface. Now the point clouds uh, that we, uh, we would have received this as Jack's processed it um, through recap, you get the RCP file. So I can select that, import the cloud. We get some options with some movement. Uh, we're just going to go with the default settings and click OK. Very quick uh, import. Now, um, a good way to navigate through Civil 3D, uh, you, users will be familiar with uh, using the wheel to zoom and pan, hold the button to pan, uh, nothing fantastic about that. We go over to the View tab and we can turn on the View Cube if you haven't already got it turned on. So my View Cube turns up here. And so I can use this then to navigate around the drawing and see things in 3D. Get a profile view. Um, another method which a lot of users might not be aware of is holding shift and then using the mouse button as if I was panning, so shift pan, and I can then orbit the, the model and get a good look at what we've, uh, the data we've collected. So you can see there's, this is a good data set. We like this one because it had a lot of uh, variety. It had some tree objects, had some buildings, some uh, cars. Typically this, uh, these objects would be noise when creating a surface that we want to exclude. And then there's this ground, a lot of ground data as well and a bit of road in here as well. So it's quite a good data set uh, for demonstrating. Um, and then when you're finished orbiting and, and perusing your data, you can click on the top button and that will return you to the top view. Um, it will also do a zoom extent. So if you happen to be orbiting and your data's off to the side and you've lost it, um, you can always double click the um, mouse button to zoom extent, or you can click top and it will give you the top view and zoom to your extents. Okay, so we've uh, brought in our point cloud. <clears throat> when I select the point cloud, uh, it brings up a contextual ribbon. And we've got some <clears throat> variety of options in here. Now the point size, this is just how it displays, level of detail. There's a few more navigation tools in here, but I, like I just said, you can um, navigate pretty easily just using the wheel and the shift buttons quite, uh, quite easy. Uh, there's a few options here in how it's displayed. So in this drop down, um, by default we're coming in with scan colours and that gives you uh, the uh, colour of the point as it was uh, collected by the scanner. Um, we can uh, have, we do have a few other options in here. This data set is classified, so I can click on the classification. This is quite interesting and quite important for um, the map method. 
uh, because it will be filtering by the class. So what I've done with this classification, I'm going to click on the colour mapping button here. And you can see our LiDAR classification is listed here. Now I've gone through and turned off the ones that aren't used. You can see, uh, and I've customised those colours so we get a bit of contrast. Now the ground we've got here is the majority of these, uh, of this, uh, these points here. Uh, there were some low vegetation shots. There were no medium vegetation shots. You can turn that uh, on and just click apply and there won't be anything light up. And so you can turn them on and off. Click apply and they will uh, either illuminate or, or turn on and off, toggle on and off. Uh, I've chosen B for buildings, chosen blue, and for reserved I've chosen red. And you can see how the reserved, they seem to be uh, natural surface shots. Uh, so we're getting quite a few uh, when we build this surface, we're going to be using those two uh, classes, ground and uh, reserved. Um, if I click OK on that, and I just do an orbit to see the difference in the points, and we'll go up to where the buildings were because that's quite a good uh, good contrast. You can just see how the building roof lines are in blue, um, my road objects are in red, and we've got uh, some natural surface there. Uh, the different shades of uh, grain for the different heights of the um, what the software uh, is is classing as vegetation. Uh, we do there are other the options the elevation if you've got a uh, rolling hills uh, that can be helpful. So basically by contour uh, level, different colours, and uh, just the normal. So there's a few other options in here. Um, pretty much the ones that I found the most, most useful uh, would be either the classification or the uh, scan colours. And I'll just click top to bring my view back. Okay. So further to uh, the cropping you can do in recap, uh, Civil 3D also has some cropping tools. I like these ones because we get a polygonal option. There's also a circular option if you had a point object uh, and you wanted to exclude any data around that, then you can just use the circular uh, selection and pick a point and obviously uh, do a circular selection. The advantage of the polygon uh, selection is you can, as it says, draw yourself a polygon and I can choose the objects that I want to exclude and oh my god my data has gone I can just have to choose inside or outside so which uh, points do I want to keep I want to keep the ones that are outside my selection so that's how you would uh, toggle that uh, I can make polygonal crops I can also make the uh, typical rectangular crops is to be expected. Uh, again, it's asking me which ones I want to keep, uh, and so I want to keep all the ones outside the selection. So I've got my cropping options. Uh, I like the um, polygon version because if I make a zoom on an angle, and if I wanted to exclude, for example, a fence line, or if I wanted to exclude these trees, then I can choose the polygon option and I can slice portion that I want to keep and I want to keep the building but I want to check, chop out the trees, uh, then I have that uh, I have that control. Now um, further to cropping, so I can take out portions, let's bring that back to the top, don't take that around. So further to the portions that I've removed, I can uncrop all, I can also uncrop last. So if I select, if I make an error in my selection, then I can just uncrop the last and you'll see that that portion of tree is now returned. Uh, and what I can do is continue to uh, uncrop and I can uncrop all and return all of my data back. Um, if I got to a point where I didn't want to have to undo everything, but I've done quite a lot of cropping work, I can do my crop And then I can use this uh, cropping drop down and I can save uh, the cropping state. So I can save it here and give that a name. I'm going to call that uh, crops. 
so my imagination. Uh, so I've cropped that and now I have that as an option, as a drop down. So I can continue to crop uh, and then if there's uh, a, a state of the cropping exercise that I wanted to return to, um, so I can continue to crop that contextual ribbon uh, and then I can uh, return back to that crop state. So that's available. So I'm just going to crop all, make sure I've got all that data. So we've got everything. Okay. So zoom extents. So still in the contextual ribbon, um, we can manage the point cloud now in here. I do apologise, everything's turning up on the other screen. Okay, drag that in. So inside the point cloud manager, uh, as Jack described, uh, the scan is made up of different portions. Uh, this is this scan, but you could have different um, raw data, um, the different LAS files uh, contributing to the, point, the overall point cloud. And so those different scans would be uh, highlighted here. And so I can select these and it will highlight the uh, scan uh, which, I, uh, which I'm selecting. Uh, if there were more than one scan in this, then they would populate this tree and I could select which one uh, based on this uh, interface. So you do have also access to that information. Okay. All right, so we've brought in our point cloud. We've done our cropping that we wanted to do. And so now I'm going to um, I just let you know that this also turns up in the external reference list. So you can see here I've got my aerial photo and I've also got the point cloud that's been brought in. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the home of where that lives. Once I've brought in my point cloud, I can create a surface from it. This is a single 3D method. So uh, create point cloud from, uh, create surface from the point cloud. Brings up the menu. Now we're going to give this a name. I'm just going to call this one uh, Civil 3D. We call it C3D for short. Uh, we can pick our surface style. Now I've uh, put some in here just for uh, expediting the process, uh, but we're going to use uh, light, uh, light gray for Civil 3D. Uh, users can always make their own surface styles and in the display all I've done is just uh, given that some uh, light grey colours so you can make your own customise your own surface styles in there. Okay so we're applying a, a surface style, uh, we step through the process, we can include and exclude data up here, there's some more control options uh, and now what we've got here is an option, um, this is the space between the points. You can see how it's uh, down at 3.5 millimetres or 0 0.0035 metres. Um, that's the smallest distance in the data set. And you can see here that it's, if we go with this, we will get 1,430,000 odd thousand points. So it's quite a massive data set. It's pretty typical for a point cloud to be that large. Um, for this exercise, I'm just going to enlarge that spacing to one meter. And you can see how it updates this number down here. I now have a much more manageable 294,000 points as opposed to over a million. Uh, and it does give me a percentage up here. It's kind of hard to see with the colours, uh, but it's basically saying 20.5%. Um, this, when I process this, it'll take about a minute to process. If, uh, and I have run this with the entire data set and it took five minutes with the, um, with the over a million points. Okay, the next step, uh, we get to do some filtering. Now there's a planner option, which is, uh, uh, these are different uh, algorithms applied by the software to determine which points to include and which to exclude. Uh, there's a linear option, uh, the cream option, which is a bit more intelligent, and you can see how it looks at trends. So if there's a tree or outlying high points, it will exclude those, same with the, with the cars or buildings, etc. And of course, we can apply no filter, which will just give us everything, which would be quite aggressive surface. You can imagine every shop that's been hit a tree branch or something, it will be included. So what we'll do for this exercise is use the cruding option, and then I can create a surface. Now, this is typical for uh, this exercise. You'll get this pop-up. Um, what it's saying is that it's creating the point cloud in the background, um, but it's known that it takes a long time, so they just accept that um, delay, and you can continue to work. I can continue to pan and zoom and move. Uh, but what this warning tells you 
is don't uh, or avoid uh, editing the point cloud while it's making a surface or it might uh, corrupt that process and you might not get a surface out of it. So we won't do any edits while it's um, processing the point cloud. Uh, and so with that many points, uh, it will take about a minute to process uh, and that's pretty typical for, for, a file, for a file this size. I suppose, um, Terry, just while we're waiting for that, the, the, the thing about this file is that it's mostly, you know, brownfield, sorry, green, greenfield even. Um, so it, the fact is that, you know, we're asking for a, a, a you know, a gap of, a, of three mil is, is, is just extreme anyway. So it's, it's taking a logical look at the, um, the, the file and the context of the area you're looking at and applying something that seems reasonable rather than completely, you know, off the scale and unnecessary. Absolutely. Um, for and typically, if you're using a point cloud, there's the reasons for it is usually because either the site's inaccessible or you want to capture bulk data, so things like a whole coastline or or a whole subdivision or whatever the the case may be. Um, inaccessibility might be one of your reasons for using a point cloud data collection um, to manually survey um, this uh, area would be very, very time consuming. And so the trade-off for lack of accuracy uh, is the speed at which you can process it. Okay, so you can see how in the background, um, little progress bars triggered and then the surface has arrived. Uh, so we can click here to zoom to the surface, which we already had. Okay, so you can see now how I have a surface in the background. And I'm just gonna give that a save. Save early, save often. And I'm going to go on a angular, angular view and you can see our triangulation. I'm just going to zoom in and see uh, from a profile view, orbit around this, and you can see how it's excluded these trees. It's excluded the building. As I move down, look down the road, it might be a good view. Holding shift and panning to do my orbit and shortcut and got in too close. So I'm just click right and that'll move me back to the right side and zoom extents. So you can see there's an outline here which is included. So we're gonna get a bump in our surface. You can always use the surface edits in Civil 3D. The surface edits in Civil 3D are really good. Uh, and so you can edit out any points, any undesirable points that you've gotten. Okay, I'm just gonna jump back up to the top. Orbit around that. Now this surface, um, let's right click and in the properties. So you can see here we've uh, applied our style, just the light uh, contouring and given it, that, um, given it that name. So we're happy with that. And for the next efforts, we're going to use the map tools to create a surface. So in order to do that, uh, we use the map tools, we type MAP create PC surface. So it's basically a shortcut for map create point cloud surface. So ask me to select the objects. Uh, now, what I'll do is uh, select the point cloud. Now what I can do here is I've got my, um, I've got my selection cycling on. Any of these options down the bottom, if you weren't already aware, uh, you can be, um, the buttons can be toggled on and off here in the customization. So uh, you can turn uh, your selection cycling on and off via that shortcut. So I've got my selection cycling on, that's the option. So I can select uh, an object and I can define my point cloud, that's the object I wish to select. Push enter on that. Uh, the level of detail is graphical and it chooses the output uh, file name. I'm just gonna uh, create a TIFF file. And we're going to uh, use our filter. So this is unique to this method, the map tools. And you might recall that we had uh, the ground surface and the uh, reserve 11 surface. We click OK on that. Processes, this is, um, Quite impressive how fast this method is, given the uh, number of points. You can see over a million four hundred thousand points in this method. 
Okay, so what that creates is a, an entity. And in the properties, you'll see that it's, uh, it's called an uh, AC map uh, grid surface entity. It's not like a normal AutoCAD object, um, and it can be a little bit sticky. Obviously, it's quite noisy visually with, um, with the uh, mesh that it's created. And so I typically uh, create a layer called freeze. Here's one I prepared earlier, and it's just basically a frozen layer. You can just put that on the same layer. And I'm just clicking on the Home tab, and I'm assigning it to a layer. I'm going to assign it to the freeze layer. And so that will be hidden. I'm happy with that. So I've got the object. It's in the drawing, but it's just frozen. So the next step, once we've created that uh, ground surface entity, we come over to the tool space. We're going to create a surface. You can see here, if I use this drop down, we've got our civil 3D method surface already, and I right click on surfaces, create a surface. Brings up this dialog box uh, with the name, it's going to call it map. And with the style, as before, I've just made some which are different to each other. So with the map, we're going to go with uh, the dark. So it's just some dark gray contouring instead, just for contrast. And click OK on that. So we've made our surface, but there's nothing in it. It doesn't have anything in its definition. I expand out the tree for definition, and under the DEM files, I right click and I add an entry. Brings up this dialog box. I can use the uh, browse tool, navigate to my uh, point cloud uh, data which it's created, and I can enter that option. Gives me a bit of uh, information regarding the surface. Click OK. Progress bar down on the bottom right. Building the surface from uh, one. 0.4 million points, so that's not uh, not too bad. Okay. So you can see now we have uh, some light grey contouring and some uh, dark grey contouring. What I'm going to do to help illustrate this is with my point cloud, I'm just going to put that onto a layer called point cloud, which I've made. Terry, I was just wondering if it'd be possible just to unload the point cloud, just to show whether or not, would you would you suggest freezing or or um, unloading would be um, the, the best method of display for for point clouds? Um, because I might want to toggle it on and off, I oh, okay. I always like to use layers, and I'm a bit of a stickler for layers as well. Um, um, my pet hate is designers who would use layer zero for everything, and that just don't know what you're talking so. about. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, Cool. Thanks, Terry. So definitely, um, yeah, definitely. I would recommend using uh, layers. You can unload it and reload it, but obviously, then you have to reload it uh, in the time that that takes. So, um, yeah, with the uh, point cloud layer. So, with the point cloud layer, I'll just freeze that layer, and so that's given us a bit more clarity to our contouring. We'll just zoom out. We can appreciate that. Now, when we're using um, data sets like point clouds. Uh, it's important to set up our drawing to make sure that we can handle the large uh, uh, large file sizes. So one of the options I like to do is to come down to the command bar down here. I right click and click on options. Brings up my uh, options menu. And over here in selection, I do this by default um, anyway, but users might, for this exercise, might choose to deactivate the um, preview selection when no command is active. If you don't do that, every time you hover over an object, it will highlight it to try and preview it as if you selected it. And with the point cloud plus all the surfaces that we make, plus any design you might have on that drawing, um, everything just flashes like a neon sign. So I would definitely recommend deactivating that. Uh, you may also choose to deactivate the preview when a command is active. So I just have that this one off by default. Uh, so that's one uh, method. Uh, another one which I would recommend uh, users do is uh, set the uh, level of detail. So that's just the level of detail command. Level of detail.
And you can see how that's immediately reduced my level of detail. As I zoom in, I get all my detail back. So I'm not losing any information, but what it does is it goes easier on the um, graphics card and the processor as it has to try and um, manage these massive files. It's indicated up here on the top left, that little icon there uh, will tell you that your level of detail mode is active. And as I zoom out, you can see how I lose detail. Obviously, if there was a lot more detail, as I zoom in, I get that detail back. So I'm not losing any information, it just means that my computer doesn't have to struggle to display. Uh, so yeah, you can also toggle that off, uh, level of detail off is the command to remove that setting. Okay, so we've got a surface that we've made uh, from the uh, Civil 3D tools. We've made a surface using the map tools. Uh, the next method I'd like to demonstrate uh, will be the uh, Civil site design using the model viewer. So I click over on roads uh, for the Civil site design. Click on model viewer. Mm -hmm. Full okay, so there's no surfaces showing at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll come into the point clouds tab and click on setup. In the point clouds, uh, we can go to settings. And I would Initially, have to add this file. This one's already been added, but it's just the case of uh, adding files. Let's go through that exercise. Adding the file just brings up the uh, the browser, and you navigate to you navigate to the file, and you would select. And you notice that it's the LAS file, the raw survey data. So it's not the recap version. It's not the recap filtered data or collated data. Okay, so we've uh, added our file in our settings, which is our colour method, uh, the simplification. Now with voxels, they're uh, basically a 3D version of pixels. So with the voxel size, if you activate the simplify option, the larger this number, the simpler your data set. So if we made that a much larger number, we would get a much simpler data set and vice versa. So we'll activate that. We'll leave this create surface function off for the time being, I'm just going to bring in a point cloud and not create a surface from it yet. And I click on import point cloud. Uh, I think this is a about a 30 second uh, exercise. Okay, progress bar is starting to move now. So you can see uh, just uh, the raw LAS data filtered by the voxel setting and a nice, uh, nice example of what we're looking at. The point cloud, uh, point cloud data brought in. We can use our select tool and do some cropping directly, uh, and we can uh, crop or uh, remove those portions. Okay. What we want to do is create a surface. So we'll go back into our setup. In our settings, we set our uh, surface data in here. So um, I'm just going to call it uh, CSD point cloud, leave that name as is. Uh, with the ground data settings, there's a few options in here. So this is like the filtering that we saw before the filtering method. It runs different algorithms that uh, have different sensitivities. So for example, the mountain area, you can imagine a ground surface that is quite undulating, so it's much more forgiving with uh, the, the uh, height difference in the points, and it will include a lot more data. With a complex area setting, um, it will be uh, set for areas like this, which will have uh, large flat areas with a few outliers, things like trees and vehicles. With the buildings area option, as you can imagine, like in a city uh, environment, you're going to have um, the roofs of buildings, which will be quite high. Uh, which you would want to exclude, and so it will uh, be set for those uh, for that sort of environment. For this environment, we're going to use complex area. Uh, our resolution, which will be one, that's the density of the points, and with our iterations, it's how many times it runs that uh, algorithm. So that's the iterations, how many times it's done that filter. For most of the projects, uh, you can just leave that set to 50. 
So we'll click apply and accept that setting. We'll click OK on that and we'll come up to create surface. You can see how it's uh, triggered my building please wait progress bar down here. So as with uh, any of the point cloud data, you're going to get some delay. And we're getting some progress uh, building a surface. For those of you that are watching um, and you are not um, Civil 3D users and you're using Civil Site Design, maybe with AutoCAD or BricsCAD, really this is the sort of main solution um, that, that, that Civil Site Design offers to, to overcome for the, you know, the fact that you're not maybe having direct access to recap or to Civil 3D to import the uh, RCP file. So um, this is really for the AutoCAD, BricsCAD users um, who don't necessarily have uh, those particular tools. Right, so um, if you didn't have access to Civil 3D, you may, this is um, certainly a solution for you. Uh, the version that I'm running of Civil Site Design at the moment is mounted on Civil 3D, so it does work as well. So it can be um, certainly a, another weapon in your arsenal. Even if you have Civil 3D tools available, uh, you'll have the Civil Site Design option. Um, and when we get our surface, um, I, I really like, um, with Civil Site Design, the model viewer, um, the quality and the ease at which you can navigate, I think is, uh, is quite handy. So you get that, uh, you get that functionality as well. Okay, so that's just taking some time to build. Maybe, um, JT, is there any way we could get the users to um, give us uh, some examples of their experience with uh, point clouds? Yeah, look, I mean, we've already had some, we've already had some good Q&A um, uh, come back from um, several of the users, which is, has pretty much, I'm hoping, mo most of what we've done so far has been answered. Now, I've just noticed you've got one of the forms popping up, Terry, which um, has obviously been off screen for a while, so... <laughs> Uh, should we just go back to what you were uh, go back to what you were doing? Yes, um, frustratingly, when I had this uh, set up, it was all to pop up on the primary screen. So um, that's popped up on another screen. So we've been waiting for the progress bar, but it was waiting for me. So uh, user error there. Okay, so total number of triangles you can see here. We're going to get uh, 83,000 triangles. Create a new surface. I'm going to give that the name uh, CSD for Civil Site Design, uh, and the style. We're happy with that, so we just click OK. And we're getting a bit more uh, progress now. So yeah, just uh, that long delay was uh, waiting for me to input the uh, name of the surface. Yeah, just while we while we wait that we we have had a, a you know a series of different questions. Um, some of which relating to geotiffs. Um, others relating to classification, some which we may answer, just sort of raise at the end, because every time I start talking, I notice that everything starts to happen again. So I'll shut up and let Terry get back to it. <laughs> well, that's always good. Uh, if, you, if you can do that in the future, just start talking, and then it'll, it'll be much quicker. Thanks, JT. That's, that's great. Magic. So um, with the uh, Site Design, click on the Home tab, and we'll probably display. Uh, and so what we want to show is our, uh, it gives our surface the PC dash uh, prefix, which is point cloud, and our surface title. Uh, now, I'm just going to bring it in using the grass uh, style at the moment. Uh, and I'll bring that in and it'll show our surface um, with our thousands of triangles. Okay, so we've got our surface in amongst our point cloud. You can just see how it's recognising uh, the road shape, for example. Uh, I can change how that displays. I'm just going to use the pure rendered version without the triangle edges. And it just brings your attention that uh, this rendering is actually using a photograph of grass to render. It's not just a green colour. And each of these is individual blades of grass. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. So we've got uh, that render through, through the the point cloud uh, and what you can 
notice is the um, buildings and what's been filtered out. So the road, for example, included as a ground surface, it um, met that criteria, but the buildings, the trees, etc., these points are excluded from the surface bill. And uh, with the uh, surface, with the render, what I can do also here with the toggle display, um, with the grass, what I can do is I can also extract that image from my aerial photo. So I click in here and it'll prompt me to go back to my uh, drawing and select my aerial photo. Click OK on that and OK. And we now have an aerial photo as our base. So even if my, uh, I'm just going to Even as I uh, navigate through, you can see how my image has, is now representing the background. Cool. So for the uh, next exercise, um, to, we now have a uh, civil site design surface and we're going to be bringing that into civil 3D for comparison. So still in my roads tab for civil site design, I open my surface manager and I select my uh, surface. I want the point cloud, the PC-CSD surface. And I click on the export uh, XML. Mm -hmm. So here in the point cloud, I select the surface that I want. Click OK. It asks me, uh, view the folder, I say yes. And this has popped up on another screen. Uh, and so all I want to do is just to uh, copy this uh, address and then I can close that. Close this. Okay. So the next step, uh, we come into our tool space. We've got our two surfaces here. These are our civil 3D surfaces, uh, the ones that we made using the civil 3D method and the map method. So I right click in here and I can create a new surface and I'm just going to call this one uh, CSD, the civil site design. And the style I'm going to assign is going to be demo, uh, I made a white uh, on floor for civil site design. Click OK. So I've made a new surface. And I'm just going to open that up. And oh, for this surface, we'll actually use the uh, import method uh, to bring it in. So in, this, in the Civil 3D tools, we can uh, import our XML file that we've just created. And unfortunately, that's turned up on my other screen. Uh, and so we browse to, uh, we paste the address in here. Um, we've already got that uh, turning up, but I can select that file. And it comes up with this uh, dialog box. It's asking me what I want to import. So yes, I want to give me my surface. So I can click OK on that. that a moment to create using my expense so then we get my detail so we put our surface in there I'm just going to jump into my tool space again and it's created my uh, map PC surface um, so what we'll do is we'll just assign that style to uh, this surface so into the uh, surface properties manager uh, instead of the under contours one that it's Assigning to it, I'm just going to assign the civil site design white surface. Might have uh, selected the wrong. There we go. Just giving it some time. Uh, I just uh, broke my own rule. Um, anything with point clouds, once you've done something, just give it. 
uh, time. Give it time to process and calculate. So as you just saw then, I, I, I changed the setting. It didn't change and then I was like, oh, I must have done something wrong. Just give it a good 10 seconds, like a legit 10 seconds to process because um, there's, the file sizes are so big um, that it might be uh, working in the background. And the more clicks, the more things it has to do. So yeah, just be patient. Okay, so we now have three civil, uh, three civil 3D surfaces, each one generated from the point cloud. And you can see the similarities and differences uh, depending on the uh, colour of the contouring. So you have these three different shades of, uh, I guess, shades of grey. So you can see the similarities and the differences. So with the outliers for the buildings, for example, uh, some styles will include that. Now any of these styles, any of the surfaces, I can click on the properties and it will tell me that uh, source data. Uh, and so we can, we call this one map. So that was the map method. For example, this is the civil site design surface and the light gray was the civil 3D method. So another way we can uh, do those in comparison is I'll just uh, type PL for polyline. I'll draw my polyline through. I can select the polyline, I right click and I can go to Quick Profile, and that will pop up on the other screen. Uh, now we've got uh, the uh, Civil Site Design Surface. I'm just going to assign a style for that one. Uh, for the Civil Site Design Surface, we use the uh, white. Just, uh, just so you're aware that Terry's got, you've got two. You've Terry, you've got two Civil Site Design Surfaces in there. The PC one is the one that we um, we imported um, that. Second one you've currently got highlighted is the one that we're not going to be using. Right, right, right. Yeah. So yeah, what I will do is I'll actually go and delete that one. So we'll just use the white surface for our civil site design surfaces. For the civil 3D method, uh, as per the contouring, uh, that was the light gray. And so I've just set these up uh, for exp uh, expediting the process, but you guys can uh, have these look how you want. Uh, and in the map method, uh, that was the dark contours, the dark gray. I'm um, happy with that uh, setup, but you can customize all of this. So we'll click OK on that. Uh, we pop in the uh, profile, and how we can do this is we just use this, uh, you can do it in the view tools, but I like to use the shortcut up here. Click on that minus. Fly out and we'll go with two vertical views, split my view in half, and then I can focus on the profile on one view and the plan on the other view. And another interesting civil 3D tool, uh, if I select my profile, I get a contextual ribbon and I can look at my, uh, set my station tracker up here. Uh, and so I can go to my options. Okay, that option back in. Uh, I'm going to change this one to yellow so that it stands out. And I'm just going to reduce that uh, down to 10 metres. We're happy with that. So I click OK. And now as I sc scroll along patiently, we should be getting a uh, marker. I have to turn it on for all viewports, two-stage process, all viewports. So now when I'm over here, you just might be able to see in this view, there'll be a marker moving up and down telling me where I am. And so what this is good for is comparing the surface methods to each other. And you can see here there's a few outliers uh, for the different methods uh, depending on uh, the method that we used. And so we can come back in and make some uh, localised edits if you want to using this in the 3D tools. Uh, you can also, with the surface, uh, for example, I'll uh, come into my tool space and we'll get rid of that. Uh, we didn't need that. And so what I wanted to do was to show you some simplification tools. So some of these uh, surfaces are including quite aggressive data, can be quite uh, messy. So you can select your surface. And up here in the edit surfaces drop down and you can text your ribbon. You can apply an edit called simplify surface and it will bring up this uh, interface and you can choose your uh, simplification method. You can use edge construction or point removal. 
uh, so we'll use the point removal option. We can step down uh, and there's some more settings how we want to reduce it. Um, can be quite aggressive if we wanted to with 50%. So just to get a, a feel for what we're going to do, I'll leave it set really high at 50%. Uh, and we'll just uh, click apply on that. You can see the progress bar telling me that it's working in the background, removing all those points. Total points are moved, 68,000 points. So I'm happy with that, finish. See our progress bar again, moving through. And that simplified that surface. So still quite a lot of information there, but a lot simpler. So that edit will, like all of the edits for the, uh, for the uh, surfaces uh, will be displayed in the definition for the surfaces. So you can make your edits and uh, determine which surface you want to edit and they will be displayed here in your definition. So if you remove points, add, add triangles, flip triangles, add points, etc., all of those will be listed here in the tool space. So regardless of which surface you edit, you've got control over uh, where the edits, which edits are applied to which surface. Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, for uh, creating a surface. JT, is there anything else that you uh, wanted me to, to cover? No, look, I um, appreciate guys, we are just over the hour mark. We all try and keep our webcasts around that uh, around that mark. So um, we have had a few questions um, for, for, um, in relation to some of what you've spoken about. Um, I guess the, the, the main one that um, has come through from um, one of the users is the difference between the civil side design surface and the others. Um, in relation to the contours. Um, and I guess if you can zoom in a bit, Terry, if we can sort of see the comparison. I mean, I'll be honest, considering this is, you know, a, a you know, brownfield um, and it's just simply interpolating points, there are a couple of factors that are involved with civil site design um, and then, you know, civil 3D. You know, the algorithm that's going into the creation of the point cloud is different. I mean, we're not looking, we're not seeing significant differences between the surfaces. It's pretty marginal. The variables that we've put in for the point cloud within Model Viewer um, aren't exact replicas of the variables that we're putting in for the point cloud with um, Civil 3D. So there are going to be some differences between the two. But to the extent where you're maybe seeing vast differences in interpolation, um, I don't really see that we've got that. Um, I think it's pretty close, if I'm honest with you. I know, Terry, you're pretty familiar with this data set um, and, and sort of how it's been put together. Would you be pretty well, happy? Visually, you see, yeah, visually you can see, uh, and this is the uh, point of doing all three methods on one drawing, is to see the, um, the proximity of the contours to each other, um, which is revealing in the accuracy or inaccuracy of the different methods. Uh, and also the reason why we've uh, shown this in profile, again, to highlight uh, what points would be considered outliers depending on which method uh, and which algorithm you've chosen. So mm. uh, different methods have different strengths. Um, and so yeah, it's really up to the user how they want to apply or which method to apply. Yeah, and, and so it's all the same. Go on. Yeah. The differences, yeah, I guess, would be um, different level of accuracy, different data to be included in your data set. Uh, the method of exclusion um, and so yeah if you're working in a different environment you might choose a different uh, method um, the file size can be a, a contributing factor if your machine is struggling um, with a much larger uh, point cloud data set then you might choose a, a much simpler method but as you've seen all three methods have options for um, simplification uh, and you can always edit the surface afterwards um, if you leave it running overnight uh, and it builds the surface for you in the morning, then you can then simplify that surface so you don't have such a massive unwieldy survey surface. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, I, I guess hopefully that answers the question. It may or may not answer the question from uh, from uh, um, the user, but at the end of the day, it, it does come down to different algorithms, um, different simplification and whatnot. This is a vast number of points at the end of the day that the software is trying to both um, piece of software dealing with. So there could be differences, um, you know, but, um, between them. 
a couple of other questions. Um, and again, if that hasn't answered the question, um, please, please, um, uh, at the end, there is a survey and there'll be an optional, um, any questions regarding content, please um, fire that back to us and we can, you know, discuss it with you further. We're not in any way trying to um, uh, sort of say we don't have, you know, the, the answer. A uh, couple of other ones which are sort of related to civil site design, um, one of which is, does civil site design have simplification tools? Yes, it does. Um, on the roads tab, Terry, under the model uh, model builder pull down, there is a modify surface tool. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if any of us have, in any great detail, used this to actually simplify a point cloud. But in theory, once this, this surface is created, it's a snapshot of the point cloud. So the theory is we could simplify that using a voxel size of any certain amount. Um, you can do this with any surface. It's also got extend and trim. The idea is that if you do go ahead and use this particular tool, it will create a copy. So if you find yourself in a position where you're wanting to um, uh, go back to the original, um, unless you check the box at the bottom, which says modified speci modify specified surface, it will create a copy which will be simplified. So you've got that, those two things to compare, cross compare, and then go from uh, go from there. The only other question we've got at the moment um, is point clouds uh, being visible in cross-section plotting. Well, if, if you think about it, this is actually a civil site design surface you're looking at. So in a sense, this could be your natural surface. So if you're plotting cross-sections or a long section, this surface could uh, well be the base surface or sample surface that you're using um, as part of your design. Uh, only other question really, which kind of, uh, unless anybody's got any others, um, feel free to throw them into the Q&A. Um, the only other one is really just in regards to the actual webcast itself. Yes, there will be a recording available. If you go to our YouTube channel, um, there will, you can see Terry's there got the modified version of that surface. If you go to our YouTube channel, the slide at the end will um, uh, basically give you an indication in, as to what our channel is, and, on, and in there, the webcast recording will be either today or more than likely will be available tomorrow for you guys to go ahead and watch. You'll also get an email from GoToWebinar saying thanks for attending, and there should be just a reminder to go and have a look at our YouTube channel there. Unless there's any other questions, I don't want to take up any more of anybody's time. Um, uh, but uh, I think we are pretty much there. I don't see any other questions. I think the only other one was actually, sorry, just in regards to classification, a couple of people asked this. Um, is there any way of changing the classification of the data you receive? And I guess the overall answer to that is no. Um, the classification is cemented into the LAS file that you're provided with in the first place. Um, so once you receive that, you may find that there is zero classification. And unfortunately, there's not much that you can do about that post um, uh, when you receive that data. Terry, any other any other points uh, to raise? I'm just going to say, uh, this is um, just while you were um, describing the process I was doing it, um, you can uh, create a modified or a simplified surface. And as JT says, it, uh, it simplifies the surface, but it doesn't overwrite your existing data unless you check that box on. Uh, and that protects your, your the integrity of your survey. So it'll create a copy and it'll give it the MOD prefix, as we can see in the surface uh, options that we've got to choose from. So it gives it the MOD and then it's got the point cloud. So we would read it out as modified point cloud uh, surface. And so you can see here that I've uh, created uh, a new surface from the original point cloud, uh, a bit simpler, a bit broader triangles. Um, so yeah, absolutely you can simplify and sort of like design. Well, thanks, um, Terry. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Well, and just to stress that that tool that you just saw can be operated with a civil 3D surface. So that was a civil site design surface we just modified, but you can also grab a civil 3D surface and use the same tool. Right, folks. Well, look, thanks Emma, ever so much for attending. Um, Jack uh, and Terry, thank you very much for your um, presentation today. Jack, I have unmuted you, um, but uh, thank you very much for, um, for your hard work. And, oh, sorry, I was expecting some kind of response, <laughs> expect your response <laughs> there, but never, never mind. <laughs> um, but look, we will um, close the webinar now. There will be a short survey. Your feedback is greatly appreciated and uh, have a look at the recording on our YouTube channel in the next day or so. Thank you very much.